All right. Good afternoon, everybody. I see that people are coming into our uh, webinar this afternoon. My name is Kutai Ulkar. I'm the director of uh, recruitment admissions and awards, and I would like to welcome you to our session today. We'll wait a couple of minutes just so that everybody else can uh, make it into the room and we'll get going after that. Um, at the bottom of your screen, there's a Q&A button. Um, actually, we would like you to uh, put down there, if you can, uh, where you're joining in from today, so that we'll be able to get a sense of where uh, our students are uh, connecting with us today from. So I'll just, uh, we'll just wait for another minute or two. Thank you. Okay, we have Ontario, uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba, Atlanta, Georgia. Ooh. Halifax, British Columbia. Sussex, New Brunswick. Okotox, Alberta. I I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, I'm sorry. Moncton, Kenya. Okay, so definitely um, a wide range today, which is great. Nigeria. Miramichi, yeah, amazing. All right, so if uh, we, I think we can get going. So again, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kutai Ulker. I'm the Director of Recruitment Admissions and Awards. And I'm very happy to join you all today uh, in this uh, webinar. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, we are very excited at Mana Olsen to welcome the fall 2022 cohort, uh, which is uh, promising to be somewhat of a, what we call quote unquote, normal year. Uh, coming up. So obviously coming out of COVID-19, our university had to really uh, pivot quickly to, uh, you know, uh, first do online education, then hybrid, and now we're switching more to in-person. But I don't, I, when I say coming out, I'm not, you're not totally out of the woods, obviously, with this pandemic. So uh, there will still be some uh, COVID-related restrictions and so on and so forth on campus. So you'll be able to find some information about that on our website to see where we are on that. Um, so we're very happy again uh, to uh, welcome a, a large cohort of incoming students this year. And it looks like there's going to be a, a good variety of students from coming from all parts of the world. Um, and we're uh, joined by some of the international students here today. So I want to say hello to you guys as well. Um, as the director of admissions, recruitment and awards, I and my team um, welcome students to the university. We help you with your application process. We help you with your scholarship process. Basically, we help guide you all the way from uh, meeting you on the, on the road for, in your schools virtually or in person till they, you arrive on campus. Um, so we are going to give you some very useful information today that will help you uh, prepare to have a strong start in the fall because we want you to have all the information you need about our services, 
dates uh, and, and what to anticipate over the summer so that, uh, that you'll have a strong start come fall. Um, Myself, I was an international student a uh, very long time ago, um, and I totally understand uh, how um, uh, scary it can be to uh, start university education, both as an international student or a domestic student. There's going to be a lot of changes happening over the summer. Uh, you're going to be uh, living maybe for the first time away from your uh, uh, family or your parents or your guardians. So uh, we, are, we understand that, and we are here to help. So at any time and uh, during this event or afterwards, if you have any questions, please use the Q&A part and we'll try to answer those. Um, and if you, you know, listen today and come up with some questions later on, uh, we'll be more than happy to answer your questions after this event as well. Uh, our emails and our uh, social media accounts are very active and we try to get back to you uh, within a day or two at most uh, so that you'll be able to uh, get the, the right information from us. So uh, without further ado, uh, I would like to introduce you to my colleagues, uh, Margaret Cameron and Sonia Minosha, uh, and who will be leading the, the conversation today. So I'm just going to mute myself. I am going to stick around to answer some questions, but uh, without you know, taking too much time, I will now turn it over to uh, Sonia and Margaret. Hi everyone, um, it's nice to meet you. My name is Margaret. I'm a recruitment and admissions counselor with Mount Allison. And I also graduated um, from Mount A. So I did a Bachelor of Arts with a major in political science. Um, and I'm originally from PEI. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sonny Minocha. I graduated Mount Allison in 2021 with a Bachelor of Commerce. Um, in a minor in economics, and I kind of did a focus in finance, but that's the beauty of commerce. You can kind of explore the different streams. So happy to answer any of your questions on that. Um, I'm actually from Amherst, Nova Scotia, so just 15 minutes away from Mount Allison's campus. Um, I did have a little bit of a different experience and lived in Amherst throughout my four years. So hopefully uh, some of you are living off campus. And again, if you have any questions, happy to chat with you about that as well. So. Okay, so we'll just get started with the presentation now. And hopefully everyone can see that there. Okay, so to start off, um, you've probably heard this one before, as we're very proud of this fact, um, but Mount Allison has been consistently ranked um, as one of the top undergraduate universities in Canada, and we're very excited to welcome, again, as Katai said, excel, uh, welcome our fall uh, cohort to Mount Allison. Um, so some of the reasons why we've been ranked as one of the top universities so consistently um, are some of our, you know, um, excellent support services and opportunities that we have for students. Um, so hopefully in this presentation, we'll be able to introduce you to those. Um, as the earlier you get familiar with those services, um, the, you know, earlier you can take advantage, the, advantage of them. Okay, so the first thing that we really, um, want to make sure that you guys are aware of is uh, to check your Mount Allison email account. So hopefully by this point, um, everyone has set up their Mount Allison accounts, I'm hoping. Um, if not, please do so as soon as possible. Um, your Mount Allison account, um, you know, will be needed for things like course registration coming up and access to your email is important for all of the updates that we will be consistently giving out. Um, so throughout the year, um, we have been communicating to kind of both like your Mount A email and your Hotmail or Gmail, whatever account that you use to apply. But from here on, we're going to be kind of primarily focusing more on your Mount A email. So it's really important to check that for, for those updates. Um, and um, I'll hand it over to Sonia to just tell you about some of those things that will be upcoming in the next few weeks. Yeah, so like Margaret said, be sure to keep stay up to date by using your email account. So this is where you'll receive invites for different uh, events and information sessions we'll be hosting. Uh, some notable ones are the course registration webinar, which will be on next week. Um, we also have a first gen and friends clinic that we're hosting with all of our support services. 
So you don't necessarily have to be a first generation student to participate in that one. Uh, if you wanna learn more about uh, the services we provide our students, definitely attend. Um, and we'll also be hosting an orientation webinar uh, with our orientation chairs who are students. Um, so yeah, check your personal email account and uh, yeah, be aware that those invites will be coming to your, your emails in the, in the upcoming weeks. Perfect. So um, the next thing that we're going to touch on is course registration, um, which I'm sure is on um, a lot of students' minds right now. Um, we've definitely been getting a lot of questions about it, um, and I know that it can be a bit overwhelming to kind of know what you're supposed to take, but we hope that you will find um, the resources on our website to be helpful. We also have our academic advisors who are happy to help um, all of our students from first year to fourth year or beyond um, with their course registration and planning. So you can book appointments with them online on our website, um, but I know that there are very few appointments that would be left before um, registration opens on June 1st. However, um, I would say that it's still a really good idea to book an appointment for whatever time you can get. Um, even if it's after you know, you've registered, um, you're, you have flexibility to change your schedule all the way through the summer into the first few weeks of September. So um, if, even if you meet the academic advisor a week after you've done your registration, um, you can still make those changes, which is nice. And they'll be able to um, check over everything and make sure that you're on the right track for what you need. Um, but you should be able to find lists of all the recommended courses for each program on our website. And um, also, if you want kind of more details about the courses, um, you can access that through your Connect account, uh, your Connected MTA account. So if you log in there, um, you can go into um, the registration section. There is a link right now, and you can see where our self-service website is for courses. So you can't register yet. Again, like June 1st is um, when it's going to be opening up for first years. But um, you can take a look through all the courses that we're offering, see what times they're available, um, and that can really help you to get an idea of planning your schedule. Um, and another thing to note, so for anyone who is a transfer student, um, any students that are IB or AP, um, so you want to make sure that your official um, transcripts are being sent to us um, from whatever institution um, is applicable. And so for IB, AP, um, as soon as we get those transcripts, as long as you're an admitted student who um, has paid their deposits, your transfer credit evaluation will be automatically done. So you'll be able to find out, um, you know, if you're getting any of those credits, whether you're getting advanced standing, which can be important and may affect your course registration. So just make sure um, that it's arranged that the transcripts will be sent to us. And then for transfer uh, transfer students, it's the same. So just make sure to get your official final transcripts sent directly to us by your previous institution in order to get um, the transfer credit process going as soon as possible. That's all done by our academic advisors again, um, as I mentioned. And um, Sonia, do you have anything else that you'd like to add about course registration? Um, no, I would just say, you know, you don't have to declare any majors or minors till the end of your second year. So take this time to, you know, explore different areas of disciplines. And, you know, you also don't have to be, you know, locked into the degree you apply for. Like, for example, I started um, as a bachelor of science student. I uh, didn't find the program was a good fit for me. Um, so I ended up transferring to the Bachelor of Commerce program. Um, the Bachelor of Commerce program, you'll find it's a little more structured throughout the four years, but if you're in arts and, and sciences, you kind of have a little more flexibility. Uh, so how I approached it was um, in my first year, I said, okay, I'm not quite sure about the science program, so maybe I'll take a couple of the first year required commerce courses, and that kind of helped with my uh, degree planning and also meeting with the academic advisors throughout my entire four years. I think I was in their office, you know, at least once a semester. They're a really great help um, in making sure you're hitting those important benchmarks throughout your four years. 
Yeah, no, that's definitely great advice. And I agree, I was kind of the same way. So I was in the Bachelor of Arts program and you do have quite a lot of flexibility, in spe especially in first year. And it's actually strongly encouraged that you take a wide range of different courses to really explore. Um, when I started my first year, I thought I might wanna do an English major, but I ended up in political science. Um, so taking a bunch of different courses really gives you that exposure. And you'll also, you know, there's a lot more options that you'll have compared to in high school. So there are a lot of disciplines that you've maybe never been um, exposed to before. So it's great to take advantage of that and um, explore those because even if you are pretty set on your major, um, you might find something that will become your minor later on. So um, my other best advice is just to make sure to register as, as early as possible. Again, you can always make changes to your schedule, but registering early is super important to get into those courses that you want. Um, again, you can make changes into your schedule until, you know, first week of classes have, have started, but register for both fall and winter as soon as possible. So early June, ideally. Um, and if you do register a bit later or for whatever reason you're put on a wait list for a course, um, it's really important that you are again checking your Mount Allison email because you will get sent emails um, that will give you about 24 hours to register in the course once a spot has opened up. And if you miss that um, timeline, um, you'll be put back on the wait list. So again, keep checking your Mount Allison email and um, stay on top of things as much as yeah. possible. And just the last thing maybe to add on is that the earlier you register, the better chance of making a, a, a schedule that will work for you, especially I was definitely not an early riser when I was at university. So if you uh, wait till the last minute, you might find yourself uh, uh, short in, uh, in the in the menu of courses that you can choose from, and you may not have control over your schedule as much as you like. Yeah, that's definitely true. Yeah, try and plan according to uh, what kind of student you are and if you're a night owl or early riser. Yeah, like I think I would say top first year courses that are probably the busiest from my experience at least is introduction to psychology, the biology, uh, chemistry, biochemistry. Um, so yeah, if, if you're interested in any of those courses, um, definitely get on registration right away. Right away. Great advice. Okay, so um, another thing we'd like to talk about is orientation, which is um, definitely an exciting um, time for all of our students. It's your welcome to the university. Um, it's your first few days, days on campus and um, about four to five days of kind of fun filled activities. Um, and there's something for everyone. So, you know, some activities are a bit more, um, excitable. <laughs> uh, others are more low key. Um, so you can kind of participate in what suits you, um, depending on, you know, or you can do all of them. So you can you can personalize it. Um, so registration isn't open quite yet for orientation. But again, check your Mount A email or check our website to make sure that you get registered early. Um, Mount Allison really prides itself on its orientation. Um, there are over 100 different student volunteers that participate during this time to make it really fun and as much of a great experience as possible for our students. Um, so definitely participate. Um, it's a great way to meet people um, and great way to kind of introduce yourself to Mount, Al Mount Allison. Sonia, do you have any advice? Yeah, so I would just say if you are living off campus, uh, next year, you still have the opportunity to participate in orientation. And like I said earlier, I lived on off campus and it did, wasn't something I knew about going into Mount A. So if that's something you are doing, definitely still register for orientation. It's not just for students living on campus. And yeah, I, I just think it's the coolest thing that it's all student led and they, and they really organize um, a great event for first year students. Yeah, they definitely do a great job. And uh, for those of you international students, international orientation starts earlier than uh, the general orientation. Uh, so please make sure that you check the website and your emails as we keep telling you emails they're definitely the main area that you need to constantly check to see uh, what kind of updates we send you. Uh, you should definitely consider attending the international orientation uh, just because we understand that, uh, you know, uh, transitioning from a different country to Canada is a big change. 
uh, Canadian education system uh, is a big change. And also during the international orientation, they, uh, the orientation leaders really help you a lot with anything from uh, you know, a shopping trip to, uh, to Moncton to prepare for the Canadian winter. Uh, to uh, you know, help you opening up bank accounts, getting your telephones uh, plans, and so on and so forth. They're very helpful. So definitely uh, consider attending the international orientation. Yes, that's a great idea. Um, and also, I'll mention there's um, a special orientation for the Megan Center. So if you're registered with the center, um, it also occurs just a few days before um, the main orientation for all students. Um, so definitely look into that if that's um, if you're registered with the Mead Center. Okay, so continue on. Um, so preparing to move in. So for those students who are planning to stay in one of our residence rooms, um, you're probably feeling a bit of a mixture of excitement and maybe some nerves as you're likely living away from home and from your parents for the first time. Um, but luckily, you know, the residence process, there's a lot of support in place to kind of make that transition as easy as possible. The move-in date um, as of now is going to be um, September 2nd. Um, and so just around when orientation starts, that's kind of your kickoff. So if you arrive on the moving day, um, you can get help moving your stuff in. There's a bunch of student volunteers to help you and make that process easy. Um, if you're wondering kind of about what to bring, um, the residence rooms, you know, have basically all the furniture you need. So there's a mini fridge in the room, you know, bed, desk, dresser, etc. Um, so you do need to bring things like sheets and blankets and pillows. Um, and you need to bring things like, you know, decorations for your room and all of those personal touches. Um, but a lot of it is already there set up for you, which is really nice. Um, Sonia, do you have any thoughts? I mean, I know you didn't stay in residence yourself, um, but any other recommendations? Yeah, I would just say, even though I didn't have that experience, I know for a lot of, you know, my friends and peers, it was such a fun time to get to know so many different people from different backgrounds and cultures and um, really embrace the experience. It will be tough and a tough transition, but um, we're here to support you throughout the way. So it'll be fun. <laughs> Um, and also, uh, for those of you who are thinking about living on campus but haven't applied to residence yet, please, please, please uh, submit your uh, residence application and your deposit ASAP. Uh, at the beginning of the uh, presentation, I've mentioned that we have a large cohort coming in this year. Um, and uh, we don't want anybody to be out of a residence room or a bed. So if you haven't uh, applied for it yet, please do so right away. And uh, again, uh, the returning students move into residence earlier and those international students who may be arriving a little earlier than the uh, you know, rest of the general, general population, they may be able to move in earlier to again, check with the housing department website, please. Yes, though there will be more updates on you know exact times to move in and that kind of thing um, at a later date. Um, and another event to look forward to during the summer is preview day. So that normally happens in July. Um, the official date hasn't been um, given out yet, um, but if you can make it to campus, um, you'll be able to preview your residence and if not your exact room, a room that looks exactly like yours. So you can get a feel for what it's like and plan out you kind of your decorations and um, all of the things you'll need for it. Yeah, lots of students have lots of fun decorating their residence rooms and it's amazing what just students come yes. up with. Some Design people have that. such beautiful rooms. I was always yeah. so impressed. I wasn't one of them, but <laughs> I respect those who put that effort in. Yeah. Okay, so find your way around. Um, so, you know, you'll be moving into residence and you'll be joining your new community of Sackville. Um, but luckily, Sackville is a very, you know, easy to get around place. Um, you know, it, it takes five minutes to walk from the campus to the downtown where all the cafes and restaurants and stores are. Um, so it's very easy even for people who have a terrible sense of direction to get yourself oriented um, quite quickly. 
So um, yeah, definitely within your first few weeks, you know, get a feel for the town, explore, um, maybe walk um, Waterfowl Park if you'd like a little break from the excitement of orientation. Um, Waterfowl Park, you can see in the picture there at the bottom, like that kind of little boardwalk trail. So it's a great way to get out in nature if you're missing that. Um, but yeah, any tips from you, Sonia, on living in Sackville? Do you have a favorite spot? Um, I would say I wouldn't be fooled by how small campus is. I know for me, even growing up in the area, um, my first week of classes, I was almost too confident going in and ended up going to the wrong classes. So um, definitely explore ahead of time and get a sense of, you know, where most of your classes are going to be. Um, my favorite thing to do or spot on campus, I think I would say is I love to go to Cranewood mm. um, for a coffee or a little snack recommend songs it's great food so yeah we have great uh, on-campus dining but exploring off-campus dining um is great as well yeah i would say cranewood is also a favorite of mine yeah. ada's cafe yes. too ada's, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah can't go wrong can't go wrong and we, we have so many pizza shops like <laughs> it's amazing it's, it's, a always, cool. it's always fun doing like a taste test from all the different uh pizzerias in sackville so yeah. Katai, do you have any recommendations? Um, I like the waterfall park for walking around, but uh, if I had to choose a restaurant to eat, I like Song's Chopsticks. It's a Korean uh, food restaurant, and their bulgogi is really, really good. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Big fan. Okay, so um, another resource. So we've been really highlighting the Mount Allison email account, um, but for other information, um, it's great to go on our website. So our website is kind of primarily designed to be for prospective students. So prospective students can find all the information about admissions. Um, but now that you're current students or going to be very soon, um, the current students tab of the website is where you want to look. That's where you can find um, information about all of the different services that we have on campus and who to get in touch with for whatever issue. So um, I recommend checking that out sometime during the next few months before you get started on campus for sure. Uh, yeah, if you guys have any troubles finding, you know, anything that you need, definitely reach out to us as well. We're happy to lead you in the right direction um, if you aren't sure how to navigate the website exactly. So yeah, um, I'll put our email as well in the chat so everyone has it. Yeah, okay. So um, this is a picture of the Mount Allison student ID card, which is something very important to have um, once you get on campus. It's used for numerous things. Um, so whenever you first move in, it's usually like the first day you're on campus or you, the second day maybe that um, you'll go to the bookstore and you'll get your picture taken and you'll get your student ID card. So um, once you have it, um, you can use it to load what we call Mountie money. So that money can be used at the bookstore. It can be used um, at Gracie's Cafe, which is not included in the meal plan. Um, but on campus, it can be used for vending machines, for printing things in the library. So um, it's nice to be able to load that money onto the card um, and not have to worry about carrying around a credit card. Um, and you can also use it for um, like taking out books, for getting into your residence. So it's like your key to getting in residence. Um, you use it to go into the meal hall, um, to get into the gym. Uh, for exams, you have to have it in there. Like, so all kinds of things. So it's very important. So get it as soon as possible. And um, if you lose it, uh, you have to replace it and there is a fee. So try and take care of it as much as possible. Um, I know some people who lost them like multiple times during their first year, which you want to avoid if possible. So keep it on you. Keep it safe. Sonia, anything, any thoughts? Uh, no, I, I'm not sure if you mentioned, but it's also sometimes used to get into any events hosted mm. at, at the MASU as well. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's also a cool little token, memory token that, um, you know, you'll have for the rest of your life as well. I still have my student ID card and yeah, my sisters still have theirs and it's kind of just a fun token to look back on, on your first day of university. Very true. Yeah. Okay. So, um, 
paying your tuition. So this is another um, question that we frequently get from students. Um, and so the process um, has been simplified a little bit this year. Um, so first, um, you can check your Connect at MTA account. Um, your account statement will be updated in late August um, with all the fees that you need to pay. Um, the deadline to pay those fees um, would be about September 19th. So usually like a week or two after classes have started. Um, the fees that you're going to be paying for fall, um, it's generally 50% of your tuition cost and then about 70% of your meal plan and residence cost um, and then your orientation fees. And um, the important thing to note here is that if you're not going to be able to make that payment on time for whatever reason, such as your student loans have been delayed, um, it's important to get in touch with um, the registrar's office or financial services earlier rather than later so they can assist you with making um, like a deferment plan um, or something like that if it's going to be delayed and you don't want to be charged any extra fees. So again, early, <laughs> early warning is best if possible. Either of you have anything else to add on that or? Nope, no. Um, those of you who uh, will be uh, looking to make some um, alternate payment arrangements uh, for the university, is, as uh, uh, Margaret mentioned, if anything is delayed with your payments, uh, that needs to be discussed with financial services as soon as possible. Please don't wait for the deadline. Uh, because we, you, we don't want you to run into any, any problems in that regard. Okay, so attend the clubs and societies fair. So at the beginning of every academic term, so generally the fall and in the winter, um, the MASU, so the Mount Elson Student Union, hosts a clubs and societies fair showcasing our 110 plus clubs and societies. Um, so we really recommend that you attend that fair um, and that you get involved as much as possible in your first year. You don't want to overwhelm yourself. Um, you are already making a transition to, you know, taking university level courses. However, um, it is really a great way to meet other people, um, to build your resume even, you know, depending what you're involved with, um, and just to help you have a better first year experience and more well-rounded experience outside the classroom as well. And as I said, you know, there's over 110 different options. So there's definitely something for you, um, maybe that you're already involved with, or if not, um, you know, you can start something that uh, maybe you've never done before, which is great option. Um, well, I was a Mount Allison student. I was personally involved with Mosaic, which is like a multicultural society on campus. Um, I was involved um, as a Massey conversation partner. So those are students that come from Japan, um, a few different semesters a year at Mount Allison. And so I was like an English practice conversation partner. Um, and uh, I was also a campus ambassador. So I worked in the registrar's office as a student. Um, Sonia, what were you involved with? Yeah, so oh, I was a, a commerce student, so I was kind of more involved in the in the commerce extracurriculars, you could say. Um, so I was involved in business case competition, and with that, uh, it was a team of us who traveled to different universities across Canada. Uh, we went to Bishop's University in Quebec and Halifax, um, and we competed against these other teams, um, and we kind of assessed and evaluated this uh, real situation, this real business case. Um, and then we presented our recommendations to a panel of business professionals. So it was a great networking experience and also a great experience to apply what I was learning in the classroom to um, a real life situation. Um, another notable one would be the Venture Capital Club. Um, if you're familiar with Dragon's Den or Shark Tank, we were kind of the dragons um, in that competition. So that was a super cool experience um, and nothing like I've ever done before. I wasn't really familiar with venture capital when I when I started taking the course. Um, and yeah, like Margaret said, if you don't find one you like, um, you can always create your own. Um, I founded the Women in Commerce Society um, within the Commerce Department. So I just found, you know, there's kind of a gap and yeah, I stepped up to the challenge and I did that myself. And chances are, if you're not seeing something you like, other students are interested in, in it as well. So taking that first step to start a club um, is a great way to build your resume as well. 
I will, uh, <clears throat> just a word of caution here too, as a first year student, it's always good to attend all these clubs and societies, uh, but also be mindful about your uh, academic <laughs> responsibilities. Uh, what I would say is that don't take on too much in your first year. Try to give yourself as much time as possible uh, for homeworks, assignments, so on and so forth. Uh, a uh, good rule to go by is for every hour in the class, you should think about putting two to three hours of uh, studying just to stay on top. Um, I'll tell you from my first personal experience, um, the first semester goes by very, very quickly before you know it, you're in midterms. And I can tell you that uh, my first year economics uh, midterm was really not good because I was too much interested in, you know, socializing, getting into clubs and societies. And then I, before you know it, the midterm was upon me. So um, it's always, you, you have four years with us, hopefully. Uh, and, uh, and, and you will have chances to uh, try different clubs and societies along the way. Uh, definitely participate in them. Uh, but do be mindful that you uh, don't overstretch yourself. Yep, very true. Okay, so this is kind of connected. Um, so preparing for your classes. Um, so some of the things you would want to do before um, they actually start, which I believe would be like September 7th, um, just after Labor Day. Um, you want to make sure that you have your textbooks, um, all your required readings, you want to be on top of that. Um, you want to download um, Microsoft 365, which is free. Um, so all of that is available to you and that software is pretty helpful for most of your classes. Um, you want to um, plan out your schedule, make sure, check over it, you know, just before classes are starting, make sure you're still wanting to take those classes. Um, make sure to be aware of like drop dates and, um, you know, the last day to change your classes. That's important too. And I would say also, um, it depends when you get your syllabus for each course, um, but sometimes professors will give them early. But as soon as you get them, it's a good idea to kind of mark down all of those dates you have in a calendar or agenda. Um, because, you know, it's easy to think, oh, I'll remember this deadline, I'll remember this, but having it all for all of your courses all written out is really helpful. Um, I think that's, you know, a really good idea if you have the time for that. So yeah. now. Yeah, I would also add, if you have any questions about your syllabus, uh, definitely reach out to your professors in advance. Um, I know when I started my first semester post COVID, um, I didn't fully understand, you know, my participation requirements, whether it's on campus or online. And I showed up on campus for the class and it turns out it was actually um, unscheduled online. So make sure, you know, you fully understand your syllabi because, you know, that's where the most detailed information is and reach out if you have any questions to your professors. Yeah, definitely a good idea. Okay. So um, other advice that we have for first year and kind of making that transition. Um, you know, don't be afraid of new experiences, um, you know, especially in those first few weeks, you know, don't be afraid to socialize if you're more on the introverted or shy side, it's um, best to make that push within the first few weeks, you know, to meet people because everyone's really in the same boat, um, you know. There are some commuters to Mount Allison, like Sonia was, um, but for the most part, we have a lot of students coming from all over the place, moving into residence and are new to Sackville as well. So everyone is looking to make friends um, and, you know, talk to you. So don't be afraid to do that. Um, again, get involved if you can, but don't get too involved, perhaps, and forget your studies. Um, you know, keep track of your deadlines again. Um, and if you're, you know, struggling in any of your courses, seek help as early as possible. So your professors are definitely a great resource for this. So, you know, if you fail your first test or exam, like approach them sooner rather than later. So even in September or October, um, you don't wanna wait until December. They're definitely gonna be a lot more lenient and willing to help you the earlier in the term that you approach them. And it's a lot easier to kind of recover your, your grade in the course um, if you had kind of a rough start. Um, it's also, you know, a really good idea to attend your classes as much as possible. Um, even if participation is not required, it's really valuable to just be there. Um, you absorb more than you think. Um, just 
being there, you know, rather than just reading over the notes later. So definitely recommend that. Um, and do your best to do your readings, I would say also is my recommendation. You're realistically, you're probably not going to get through every single thing. There's a lot of reading in university and sometimes you have to prioritize, but you will notice the difference when you go to class and you've done the reading and you've come prepared. It's a whole other world <laughs> because, you know, when you do that and you're like, wow, I totally understand what's going on. I have questions. I can fully engage. Um, and it really helps your learning and your experience. So those would be some of my main tips for your first year. Um, and Margaret, like you said, like your professors notice those kinds of efforts that you're making, mm -hmm. like participating, even though it's not required or part of your grade, uh, they definitely pay attention to those things. And with Mount Allison being so small, a lot of your professors you'll have throughout your four years. Um, so making sure you're engaged with them, it really goes a long way. Start off on the right foot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good idea. Yes, because you will likely encounter them again later on in your degree. Exactly. And, and that's the fun part about it. Like you'll really connect with your professors. And to this mm -hmm. day, working at Mount A, I'll see them on campus and they'll recognize me and we'll chat. And yeah, it, it's really great. It's it's quite casual as well at Mount A. It's, it's not as um, you know scary as you might think. Professors are happy to meet you and like going to their office hours, you know, they'll be excited to see you there. So it's never a bad idea. Um, and another tip I would give to you actually um, is that when you're registering for your courses and like within those first, like the first week when you still have um, the chance to change, if you find you're in a course and you kind of read over the syllabus and you're like, oh, okay, I have to do, you know, like four presentations. For this course i hate presentations i'm like terrified of public speaking and like all of your course grade is reliant on that if you can and it depends on your program it depends on a variety of things but if you can i'd recommend <laughs> switching to another class like if you can pick courses and this is more for your upper years i would say but even in first year if you can pick courses that have a syllabus that's kind of suited to your strengths so for example if you're a really good test taker it's all tests and you don't have to do essays you know you can pick that or if you, you know, would prefer your grade to be largely based on participation, all of those things can kind of be taken into account. So as soon as you get your syllabus, you know, think about that and see if the course is really a good match. Again, not possible in all courses. Some courses are mandatory, but it's something to consider. Kutai, do you have any um, advice? Uh, one advice is that try not to miss on any of their classes as uh, Margaret already mentioned, because uh, actually when you think about it, it's about $400 or so for each class that you miss on. So uh, that's, a, that's a significant amount of money that you don't wanna waste. Um, plus uh, it, it can, like it, the, the pace of the education at the university is quite fast. And even one class may end up causing you uh, missing up on really important information that might come in useful later on in your midterms or finals. So definitely that. And I also say uh, procrastination is a big uh, problem uh, with our uh, students, well, with every student. I was like that too uh, in my first year. If I can go back you know, 20 years and give myself an advice, I would say you know, reading ahead, a uh, couple of chapters a night in, in, in different uh, subjects is always a good idea so that uh, when the crunch time comes for uh, midterms or your finals, uh, then you're finding yourself not uh, struggling to, you know, cram too much in. Um, time management is a skill. And we do have uh, people on campus who can help you with study success tips and how to cope with some of the stress in your first year. So definitely find out where they are and make sure that you um, know how to access their services. Yeah, so that brings us right into student supports. Um, so again, you know, you can go to your professor if you're struggling in the course, um, but if that um, isn't the best option for you, um, you can always try accessing different services. So some things like for academic success specifically would be things like our writing resource center, our math resource center. So those are in the library. Um, so the writing resource center, um, they will read papers over for you, give you feedback before you submit it. Um, so you can help improve your work. And this is especially valuable when you're, you know, 
writing your first few university papers as um, you know the level of formality um, you know the length of the papers might be longer than you're used to so getting that feedback can be really helpful um, also in the library um, the librarians are happy to help you with research so you may not have really done um, academic research before in high school so if you can you know approach them and they can show you you know databases how they work how to find journal articles that you can use for your papers um, they often get excited about the research topic that you you mention so they may even find you know a few starting articles for you which can really help you um, you know get motivated to start your essay early so they're a great resource so those are some of them for example um, you know maybe a good idea to get a tutor and again, getting a tutor earlier in the term rather than at the end is a good idea. Um, there are supports for first generation students specifically, supports for international students specifically, supports for indigenous students. Um, so there's a whole range and definitely take advantage of them because you know it's included in your tuition. They're there to help you succeed. And um, yeah, it's uh, make your first year uh, the best it can be. <laughs> ideally without failing any courses if possible. <laughs> and if you do fail, like it's, the transition is tough from high school to university academics. So you're not the first one to fail. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it's not the end of the world either. You can, you know, retake it um, or take an alternative course in its place. Um, but yeah, just going off the um, services that you mentioned, Mark, it's also a great opportunity for on-campus employment. Um, so, for example, if you're doing well in the class, you could become a peer tutor or a note taker. Um, so keep that in mind as well if you're looking for uh, job opportunities uh, within Mount A. Yes, definitely. Okay. And yeah, so I believe this is our last slide. Um, so Mount Allison has a huge alumni network um, throughout Canada and abroad. Um, so it's amazing how many different um, graduate graduates of the university stay still really connected and still have quite a, um, a strong connection to the university even years later. Um, so again, it's great to meet so many people during your undergrad. It's a small campus. So, you know, networking opportunities are definitely there. Um, and our alumni also participate in different events um, and kind of mentorship programs. So, you know, you can connect with them, get advice for your career, see what people who did your program are doing now. Um, so that's another option to get involved with on campus. Yeah, many of my family members uh, are Mount Allison alumni. So it's kind of a great experience within the family, you know, to share our experiences. They're all kind of similar, but they do have their differences as well. And it's a really great um, thing to bond over within our family. And I'm sure many of you will be coming uh, from families who have been alumni of Mount Allison or you know of people within the network as well. Um, and also just want to make sure that uh, everybody um, uh, are aware that Mount Allison has been making some significant investment into experiential learning uh, internships and job opportunities both on and off campus uh, and our alumni network definitely help us with that. Um, I strongly recommend not in your first year, but you know you can think about it in your first year, uh, start thinking about doing internships, uh, being part of our experiential learning programs and um, attending all the job fairs that happens on campus. Uh, to start uh, understanding what are the job requirements are, what, how you can build your resume, how you can network, how you can uh, connect with uh, other Mount Allison graduates around the world so that they can help you uh, have a very strong start after your university days. It may, it may be in, in a, you know, higher education or it may be in, right into the workforce or uh, just like some of our uh, graduates have done or students done, you can always start your own business and uh, networking with current students or our recently graduated uh, alumni. So the, uh, the opportunities are endless. Again, first year is a transition year. So let that you know, percolate a little bit in your mind, but start you know, keeping your eye open to see how can I build my team within Mount Allison for the future and uh, whatever that is uh, you want to do with your future. So 
this is going to be an exciting time. So make sure that you keep your eyes open and your mind open as well. Okay, yeah. So um, we have about 10 minutes left for questions. And I think some people may have put some things in the chat already. Um, and so we can get to those. And if you have other ones, feel free to put them in the chat now and uh, we'll try and get through all of them. Um, Okay, for international students, how early can we get there to settle date for fall intake? Um, I don't think the date has been finalized, um, but it will be like towards the end of August um, since the move-in date um, is about September 2nd for um, everyone else. Um, but that should be available very soon if it's not yet. Correct. Uh, so we do uh, want international students or allow international students to move in or arrive on campus a little bit earlier than other first year students, but you can't come here, you know, a, a week or two before the semester starts, just because the campus is still being prepared for the fall intake at that time. Residences are being cleaned, walls are being painted again because we do uh, uh, all summer uh, preparation for the incoming students because our facilities are used over the summer as well. Uh, so uh, that, that date will be communicated to all incoming international students so that you'll be able to buy your tickets a couple of months ahead of uh, time to arrive on campus. Yep. Okay. Um, let me see here. Can okay. I... So you guys have been answering some of these in the chat too already, I think, right? Correct. Uh, you'll be able to get course lists and, and program requisites online. Uh, you will have to go to uh, mta.ca um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's under academic calendar, correct? Um, it's There's a page on the website um, which lists all the courses that are recommended for each program. Um, so not in the academic calendar. I mean, you can find all of the courses that you need for your degree in the academic calendar, but there's like specific recommendations for each program. Um, yeah, it's like under course, like registration help or course help. Um, yeah, I, I sent uh, Nora who asked that question the link um, and it's also in the chat, uh, you'll see reg help for new students. So you can um, view what courses are recommended for your program year. Yeah. Um, where can the math placement test be taken? Um, I believe that's in Moodle, is it? Yeah, yeah, you would take it through your Moodle, Moodle account. Um, and then I, I I'm not quite sure how it works anymore, but uh, when I was in school, uh, you had to be authorized to kind of take it. But um, yeah, discuss that with academic advising and yeah, it's through Moodle. Yeah, and Moodle is the same login as your Mount Elson email and your Mount Elson Connect account. Are there any other questions that um, we've missed or any other questions that haven't been asked yet? Or anything else you'd like to hear more information about, if not a question, feel free to put it in the chat or in the Q&A option. All right, uh, maybe seeing no additional questions, uh, just to uh, wrap things up, uh, if you can't remember anything from this day or this presentation, one thing you should remember is to check your emails regularly and check your Mount Allison emails regularly so that you don't miss out on any of the deadlines, any of the updates, uh, events that we have over the summer, uh, we have a uh, fall preview day coming up and at the end of July, where uh, those of you who are interested uh, in seeing your residence rooms before uh, September, you can come on campus and you'll be able to see your actual room 
more than likely if it's available at that day. Um, and, um, and those of you who can't come to campus, we are hoping to do a, a virtual version of the same event. So our campus ambassadors uh, will set up 15 minute uh, appointments uh, which for you and whoever else wants to see it on your end, and they'll do a live walkthrough of the residence for you uh, in a one-on-one -on -one virtual session, and you'll be able to see your own room and the facilities uh, in person if you haven't done so. Plus, if you're ever drive, driving by, uh, you know, uh, Mount Allison campus and you haven't been on campus to take a campus tour, uh, it's very important that you do a quick detour and stop. Uh, we would love to connect with you and take you around campus. Um, it's just always good to have some sort of familiarity with the area that you're going to be living and working, or, you know, sorry, studying for the next four years and maybe working too, for the next four years. Um, so we are here to make that transition as easy as possible. Um, and then the last advice I can give you all is to... Um, do not leave things to last minute <laughs> uh, because um, you may find yourself uh, with, with a larger than expected cohort coming in this year, you may find yourself uh, 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 in a tight situation where uh, you might not have the courses you want to register or uh, find out that the schedule you, were, you wanted to have is not possible. So again, being as early as possible with your course registrations, being uh, fully uh, done, done with uh, uh, residence application um, and um, having an idea about if whether if you're you're going to attend the orientation or not are all good uh, um, decisions that you should make now and uh, because as the summer starts and you know students are in summer jobs or they're traveling or they're spending time with their families, uh, you may find that the things, uh, the time will pass very quickly. So we just wanna make sure that you don't miss out on any of those opportunities. Uh, I see that there are a couple of things in the chat. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, okay, so those are answered. Um, Margaret, any uh, closing words? Um, I think we've we've given all the advice that we have for now, but there'll be more coming um, in the next few weeks. But thank you so much, everyone, for taking the time to join in. Um, at least where we are, it's a very beautiful day out. So um, hopefully you can get out and enjoy the sunshine. Um, yeah, spend some time outdoors and good luck for the next few months, everyone. I know, you know, graduation is probably coming up for a lot of you um, and prom, hopefully. Um, so Good luck with all of that. Have a have an amazing time. And um, we're here throughout the summer to help. So do not hesitate to get in touch. Sonia, anything else you want to add? Yeah, I would just reiterate what Margaret said. We're happy to help you wherever we can along the way. And uh, we look forward to seeing uh, your faces on campus next fall. And I uh, echo what my colleagues have already said. We can't wait to see you guys on campus this fall. And uh, please stay in touch and please keep those questions coming. We're here to help you at any time and uh, enjoy your summer. Uh, congratulations on your graduation and, uh, and just get excited because we are excited to see you guys. All right. Okay. Thank you all. And we'll end it there. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.